sunrise over the Pacific Ocean. It's another perfect day. But for the inhabitants of one tiny group of islands, the sun rises earlier than anywhere else in the world. And this year, that means a special party. Kiribati, a three-hour flight from Fiji, is getting ready for the millennium. Part of Oceania, Kiribati straddles the equator about halfway from Hawaii to Australia. In 1995, its government unilaterally moved the international date line from the middle of the country to include its easternmost islands. Now at least, it's the same day throughout the Republic. But interestingly, its clocks are an hour ahead of other millennium early birds. And they have their president, Teboruro Tito, to thank. My message uh, uh, for that particular moment uh, when the sun is, is rising, and I hope to be part of that, is to remind uh, you know, all our brothers and sisters out there in, in, in the world that here comes you know, the, 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 the new sunrise of the new millennium, and that this must remind us that, uh, you know, that uh, we can have hope uh, for something better in the future. Although Kiribati may be first to confront the future, that future could be very short-lived. The nation's composed of low-lying coral atolls, surrounded by extensive reefs. And the highest point in the group is only 81 meters above sea level. In recent years, the rise in sea levels caused by global warming means that the country is fast disappearing under the waves. The end could come very soon indeed. If nothing is done at the moment, and we believe that uh, maybe this island will submit after 25 to 30 years, um, the problem then, um, the sea will come into our waterlands and uh, all the vegetation will die out, dry out, and we people cannot find anywhere to get our fresh water drinking. Fishing is still the lifeblood of Kiribati. But these fisher folk are not so simple as to misunderstand the cause of their problems. This traditional Micronesian culture with a population of only 84,000 is at the mercy of the global ecology. We, the Kiribati's people, want the developed nations of the world to reduce their amount of uh, gas emissions so that uh, the problems of uh, sea level rise would not have too much a dramatic effect upon us. If they don't, we're just going to sink under the sea. It's a problem that's now become pressing. We are being affected already. You know, we're suffering already. It's not only a fury, but we can see these things happening with the, you know, excessive high tides coming in and uh, uh, destroying patches of crops or, or destroying uh, causeways which are very expensive to rebuild. And without some radical solution to the issue of global warming, the entire population may soon be forced to sail off into the sunset in search of another island home. But the hope is that by attracting the world's attention as the first nation to enter the millennium, Kiribati can use the publicity to highlight its plight. Its fragile supply of groundwater is already at risk from other sources of pollution, but now the seawater is increasingly encroaching. It's a last-ditch battle for survival. But one of the fiercest battles of the Second World War was fought right here. Uh, this is the British and the guns gun and fortification from the Battle Japanese of Tarawa are still a local tourist Singapore attraction. 7,000 Japanese and American soldiers gave their lives on this remote atoll, and their sacrifice is still commemorated here. Many of the islanders are Roman Catholic. They believe that only God can help them in their hour of need.
It's only 20 years since the country gained its independence from British colonial rule. It was formerly part of the Gilbert and Ellis Islands. The priority of Bishop Paul Mayer is not strictly the end of the world as his flock have known it. We are fortunate geographically that we are in that place. At the same time, we think that uh, the most important thing is to commemorate the anniversary of the birth of Jesus, which is the real expectation of all Christians, rather than watching the rising of the sun. But with a 90% literacy rate, the tiny republic is certainly not trying to keep its children in ignorance of the impending disaster. The rising sea levels are everyone's concern. Now, we're going to talk about Kiripes and the rising sea level. And it's a sobering we thought in the classroom. Is... I'm really happy that we'll, we will be the first ones to see the sunrise. But I'm also sad that we'll be the first ones also to be affected by the rising sea level. The band plays on. People here are fond of music. They take immense pride in their tiny nation's achievements. These athletes returning from the Pan Pacific Games, the medals on display, were just another excellent excuse to strike up the band. But it won't be this colonial music which will greet the new millennium. The plan is to emphasize the country's traditional culture and unique identity. Tiny Kiribati on their occasion will be exposed to the world and people who have not seen the country before will be provided a chance to see the local dances. Dancing is not just a pastime in Kiribati. It's a ritualized way of expressing emotion. And the dancers certainly exude pride in their tradition. Our ancestors were dancing hundreds of years ago, the way we dance today and the way we will dance in greeting the first sunrise of the new millennium. The issue facing the people of Kiribati is so much more than whether they'll be able to maintain their way of life, which has persisted for centuries. Certainly, the younger generations may have to abandon the old ways. But it won't be through choice or through disaffection with the values of their parents and forebears. It's as though the sea, the mother that has sustained the lives of these people for so long, had suddenly turned against them. Kiribati has always been a nation with limited natural resources. Commercially viable phosphate deposits were exhausted 20 years ago. Agriculture helped sustain the people, for the moment at least. The islanders rely to a large extent on fresh produce such as taro, breadfruit, sweet potatoes and vegetables. But all of these food sources, and consequently all the people of Kiribati, rely not only on good soil for growing, but also a bountiful supply of fresh water. And even before the land sinks beneath the waves, the rising tide will have reached into the groundwater system. The people so in tune with the ocean will be forced to move on. In 25 to 30 years from now, Kiribati may have disappeared from view. But this island paradise is no home for lotus eaters. The fishermen are a strong breed, and they will fight for their children's birthright. So they'll greet the new millennium with the powerful evocation of an age-old spirit. And as the world watches the year 2000 dawn on the receding beaches of Kiribati, the prayer will be that mankind may join hands to avert the inundation of their island homes. Oh!